I've just opened up the Atlin search bar. I, I found an asset which is, looks like verified. Let me just jump to that asset. Now, what you see on the screen right now is what we call an asset profile. Now, for a ref good, quick reference for the diverse audience that we have today, uh, one, this could be a Salesforce account profile where you have all information about your Salesforce account. Or for engineers, this could be the GitHub repo where you have code, but you have readmes, you have documentation, you have issues, you have everything there. Or you, this might be a LinkedIn, similar to your LinkedIn profile where it covers the 360 information about your professional journey. So once you bring this metadata from all these sources, it creates this asset 360 profile. And I'll take you through parts of it one by one. So on one hand, you have the technical metadata, which is the rows, the columns, the descriptions that might be available. You have the governance metadata, which is the business terminologies or the concepts, your owners, who are the actual people that are owning it, classifications and certification so that you know that this data is trusted and the data consumers, when they land on this asset, they know that this is something it's verified uh, by the team. So this, this talks about metadata, right? It changes for different assets. So let's now move to maybe some other asset. So maybe let's go to a dashboard. And as soon as if you land on dashboard, if you see the metadata evolves, you have now views coming, how, much, how many times these have been viewed. You have readmes that have been built in. Uh, you have different uh, meta folder structure, hierarchies that are available for BI. Now, for this, let, let's move back to the table asset. Now, let's look on the right top. There are different actions that you can take, and it all depends on uh, what personas you are coming from. One, you can copy this link. And this is my favorite part, favorite action on this asset profile. Data assets were never referenceable because they never had a link. You only get to know schema name, database name. They never had a URL. What this does is it creates an asset URL. So you can share this internally, reference an asset in your docs or in your Jira tickets. And this becomes a URL which makes a reference to all your assets in your ecosystem, right? If you are lazy uh, and you use Slack, you can just send this out and share it in your Slack channel. So let's try doing that. So as soon as it does that, uh, let's switch to a Slack channel. Now, this is a Slack channel. As soon as I, and I'm sure all of you in your teams also have similar Slack channels, you'll find that asset shared and all the metadata that was available on Atlin is also now unfurled and available on Slack. And let's give a big right tick. Uh, apart from that, you also get to see other kind of assets that are available. You get to see resources. This could be links, documentation assets that are sitting in your documentation tooling, like Confluence, your PPTs, your Miro boards, your PDF files. You can look at the queries that are attached to this. So this could be a query that is linked to this. You can see all your Jira issues, uh, which are linked to this. And if you want to extend, you can even extend this and bring your quality tooling, quality metadata, operational metadata, and create that asset 360 we were talking about when we just get started. 